Are you, you good? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, guys, welcome to the Nelson Atkins. Um, today we're going on the Tomb Treasures tour. So that tour has two words in the title, tomb and treasures. So what comes to mind when I say that, tomb treasures? What do you think this might be about? Egypt, so why do you say Egypt? Okay, knowing that pharaohs and the rulers of Egypt were buried in tombs, so that's part of it. What else comes to mind when we, say, when we talk about tombs and treasures and things like that? Um, the Egyptians who were buried with many treasures to carry them to the afterlife. Great, so adding off of what this gentleman said over here, not only were they buried in tombs, but they had a lot of treasures and goods with them that um, could help them to the afterlife, and we'll be investigating that even more. So um, great ideas to start off with, and hopefully we can even build on to that a little bit more. In addition to going to Egypt, as we just talked about, we're also going to go up to China. So there might be some uh, areas there for you to compare and contrast and think about the differences between those two cultures um, and their practices. So um, just ground rules really fast. Um, if you've been on a tour here before, um, this is a little bit different. It's a little bit more participatory. You guys are going to be doing a little bit more walking. You're going to be doing a lot more talking with each other and with me. So because we are doing more walking around the gallery, you're going to see more artwork, which is great, but we also just want to make sure that you know, our hands are to our sides and we stay a safe distance from the artwork, okay? Um, especially in Egypt, because there's a bunch of glass over it, and I always see kids bump their heads into the glass. They don't even know it's there. So just be careful when you guys are investigating the artworks. Um, and as we're going, I'll just have you raise hands, and the only reason for that is so that we can all hear each other's comments. If we're all talking at once, it'll be difficult for us to pick up what everyone else is saying. Okay, so we're gonna head into our first gallery here, which is Egypt, so follow me. Okay, so let's kind of gather here in the center. All right, the first thing that we're going to do in this space, and we're actually going to do it in all the spaces that we visit today, is I'm going to give you guys two minutes to walk around inside, um, inside this gallery to look at all of the artworks in here. So don't go, don't go back out through that doorway that we just came back in and don't go through this way, doorway here we'll be going there next but so just stay in this space while we're looking make sure you do get a chance to look at the mummy um, that's something that we are not going to be investigating further so i do want you guys to get a chance to look at it um, but make sure you get a chance to look at everything in here you can talk amongst yourselves while you do this as we come back after this two, these two minutes of looking, we're going to discuss what we noticed about this gallery. Okay, so go ahead and take some time to look. <laughs> Have you guys seen a lot of this imagery before? Is that what I heard you say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what what looks familiar to you? Um, the Rhyming, I see the letter N. Okay, cool. Um, oh, you even know some of the hieroglyphics? Is that what you said? Yeah. Oh, very cool. I learned them in science and another thing. My name starts with the, what looks like a sphinx. Oh, <laughs> cool. That's, very that's cool. The, um, what kind of beetle is that again? I don't know what that's no. called. Scarab beetle. Scarab beetle. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the tip of, of your tongue, I can yeah. tell. <laughs> You guys have about 30 seconds, so make sure you get a good survey of the room. Okay.
Have you guys been here to see the mummy before? No. Have you seen a mummy period before? Okay, you have. Yeah, a lot of kids come and this is like the first mummy they've ever seen, so they're really amazed. It is. Why do you think it would be smaller? Because of the, yeah, the salts and stuff they rub. Sure, yeah. So knowing that they do things to the body, the salts, and then just kind of like all the moisture, yeah, it kind of makes us shrink. Kind of like a raisin, or a grape to a raisin. <laughs> All right, guys, let's come back to the center. And now that you guys have gotten a chance to look around, um, I just kind of want to know your impressions of this gallery, what you noticed, what's going on in this space. Yeah. I noticed that on the coffin over there, mm -hmm. um, the blue part was actually glittery. So I think maybe like the stone they used or something was maybe glittery or something. Okay, so we're noticing some things about the materials. You were yeah. really taking a close look, and she noticed that the blue wasn't just a matte blue. It was a little bit glittery. So kind of thinking about maybe the materials that they used to get those effects and stone and paint and things like that. What else did we notice about this gallery? What do all of these artworks have in common? Or did anything stand out as, like, really different? Yeah. They all have carvings and similar looks from characters or hieroglyphics that they use on it. Sure. Okay, so I heard some of you pointing out the hieroglyphics as we were looking at the coffins and different things. And so just noticing that everything kind of has a similar style to it. Um, does anyone want to describe that style a little bit more? We talked about the hieroglyphics, but how is the style on these artworks all kind of similar? Yeah. Um, they're very, um, I wouldn't say cartoony, but they're not realistic, so they're very like boxy looking. Sure, okay, so cartoony in the sense that it kind of has, you said boxy, or almost that it has like an outline, that it's not, yeah, it's not as realistic as though um, like it was photographed or yeah. something like that. It's very still, very static, things like that. I see nods of agreement. Um, anything else that we noticed about this space in here? Yeah. A lot of the things are colorful, different colors. Okay, yeah, going along with the style here, um, and you had mentioned that blue earlier, we have a lot of bright blues, reds, greens, and gold. So um, a lot of things that unify the artwork in this room. So what we're gonna do now is I'm actually gonna put you guys into groups and we're gonna use these cards to investigate an artwork of your choice. So you had a chance to look around at everything, but together with your group, you're gonna choose one item. The mummy is off limits because the mummy well, it's a human being, it's not really an artwork, and we're investigating artworks today, so the mummy's <laughs> off limits. <laughs> but um, you can choose any other artwork that you guys found really intriguing, and you're gonna use these questions here to help you um, investigate that further, and then we should have time at the end for a couple people to share out some of their major findings or what they really kind of think the main idea or main point of their artwork is. I'm not gonna read these questions aloud. You guys can read them on your own in your groups. But just be prepared to discuss after we're looking. You guys are going to have five minutes with your group to look and investigate your artwork. I would encourage you to just kind of use your observation skills first. And you can also then look at the wall label um, to learn a little bit more information and help you uh, answer these questions. OK? Are there any questions about what we're doing right now? OK. Remember just to stay in this room. Stay, stay a safe distance away from the artwork. We'll have five minutes. I'll let you know when, when time is about up. If you finish all of your questions before the five minutes and you want to investigate another artwork, that's cool too. Um, make sure you're on the side that says Egypt. We are not in China right now. So I'm going to do groups of four. Can one, two, three, four? And then one, two, three, four. Once you get your card, you can go for it. One, two, three, four. You're with okay, these here. Yeah. There you go. One, two, three, four, five. Let's do five here. You, one, two, three, four, five? I don't know where to go. One, two, three, four. Yay. OK. We got our groups. <laughs> can I see that? I know, but you pick one. 
you know, if you were describing this to like kindergartners, how would you tell them that it was a coffin? How would you help them understand that? Okay. Yeah, and relating it kind of to, you know, coffins that we use today. Human size has a lid. Okay. So a lot of clues there that were kind of obvious to you at first, but you might need to help to explain to younger kids. Nice job, guys. Ooh, I like this one. <laughs> this one's one of my favorites. So I kind of, I'm sorry to interrupt you guys, but I want to know, what do you think the object is? Kind of it's happening. No, that's fine. No, that's fine. It's like some kind of tablet. It has like the prayers and they have. Okay, and so what do you think of. Okay, so it could have been in a wall. So what do you. What kind of led you to believe that it's part of a larger. Larger wall or larger piece? It looks like a cave. It's not all smooth. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, not smoothly cut. Cool. I love this one because of the food. I love the food. <laughs> so cool. And you guys are kind of thinking about all of these together, right? Okay. Are you on the last question right now? Yeah. Okay. So why would someone need these in the afterlife? Importance? Yeah. Tell me more about that. Like, so the importance of the person who's buried, is that what you mean? Okay, and so how do these show the importance of the person? They were... Okay. Looks like that, and I was yeah. buried in that, yeah. within that, within a tomb. <laughs> so that's kind of. Sure, okay, so you're seeing like the repetition of the actual imagery and how it looks. Whatever these hieroglyphics could say, it might be a scripture or something. Sure, if we could read all these hieroglyphics, I'm sure it would tell us more, right? <laughs> I know, that's something that I at first thought they were all the same and then had to. Yeah. But they could be like a small one, you can see the difference within it. Yeah. Or something like that. If you put it in the correct order, it could be a story. Oh, okay. So, like, the, yeah. part of, like, yeah. instead of writing something like, you're a good person, yeah. you know, somebody so like, like this of everyone in the area, important mm -hmm. people. Okay, so and maybe and it associates with the the deceased person and kind of the story of their life. That's an interesting, yeah. And it is kind of arranged laterally like that. I feel like people close to the deceased. That's an interesting idea. Cool. Good job, guys. Okay, you guys have 30 seconds left. So make sure there's someone in your group who feels comfortable kind of sharing out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's kind of gather over here. I w had a chance to talk to three of the groups already, and so I want to start with the group that I didn't get a chance to talk to, and I think you guys chose the boat. Is that right? Okay. So everyone kind of crowd over here, and we'll let this group kind of share their initial thoughts. And if you guys have a thought about what they said or about their artwork, please add on. And I might ask you guys some more questions. So um, let's just answer the first question on yours. So what do you notice about this? Ah, sorry, that's for China. <laughs> I'm on Egypt. So what do you think this object might be? A boat. <laughs> OK. <laughs> would have been a big boat for shipping cargo or people or dead people. <laughs> okay, so getting more specific, I think obviously all of us can tell that it's a boat, but you're mm -hmm. kind of thinking about the purpose of the boat, yeah. that it might carry some type of precious cargo. So what did you see in this artwork, and other people can jump in too, what did you see that told you that maybe it um, carries precious 
cargo or people or something like that? Well, to me, it looks like it's carrying slaves because they look like they're all chained together. Mm. The way their oh, arms are, yep, like right. this. <laughs> yeah, if you guys didn't get a chance to, so their arms are all out like that. So it could be... Um, it could be slaves, it could be people that the boat is carrying. I'm going to throw this out to the whole group. Why might a boat like this be in a tomb? Hmm. I would think of something maybe, sometime maybe before they were important. Maybe it had some importance to them. Okay, maybe it had like personal meaning to the person. Is that what you mean? Okay. Yeah. And also, I heard that whenever they were kind of like delivered into the afterlife, they would ride on a boat. Okay, so you're bringing in knowledge from like uh, Egyptian mythology mm -hmm. and knowing about like how they would get to the afterlife and a boat being part of that process. Anything else from the group or from the group that chose uh, this object that struck you about it? Okay. Okay, let's go over to um, the coffin over here. We'll have this group share. Okay, so I want you guys to think about the la or give us your answers for the last question on this one. So that one is, why might someone need this object in the afterlife? What are three different purposes or reasons that someone could use this? Well, obviously, the first one is to hold the body, um, obviously. <laughs> and um, the second of all, we thought that since there's hieroglyphics and all this, we heard that, um, that those hieroglyphics would like protect them um, when they were in their tombs so from keeping them like curses and stuff. So if people came in, they would supposedly get cursed. And um, I don't think we came up with the third one because time ran out. That's okay. Okay, so two reasons why someone would need this in the afterlife. You guys have a little bit of knowledge about Egyptian history and know that this is a coffin, so it's for a body. Um, I actually kind of heard someone in the group saying, well, it's life size like a body. So that kind of gives us the clue to that. But I'm going to ask, and anyone can jump in on this one. You had talked about the hieroglyphs on here and that they might serve a protective, uh, a protective purpose for the person who was buried here. Why, why might we need that? Or why might that person need something to protect them? Yeah. Because in Egyptian mythology, it's a very treacherous journey to the afterlife. And they have to, the bodies have to endure a lot of dangerous things. And maybe the hieroglyphics had you know, a magic spell or something over it to keep them safe. Okay. So knowing something about m Egyptian mythology, we had kind of talked earlier about um, part of the journey into the afterlife. And so they might need um, something to protect them during that journey and take them safely into the afterlife. And now, the next question here. If you did not know anything about Egyptian mythology, you didn't know anything about hieroglyphics, you didn't know anything about these gods, how would you know or how would you guess what that would be the purpose of these images on here? Like, how would you explain that to someone who doesn't know about Egyptian mythology? Yeah. Well, you, I would think probably that it was telling their story of their life. That it might be telling their story. Yeah, someone took the time to put this all on here. Um, I know that that was something that the people who talked about the blue figurines on the black back wall, thinking that it might also uh, relate to the life of the person. So it could also, you know, that could be part of it, especially if you're, you're new to Egyptian history and you're trying to figure out what it might be, right? Um, so we didn't have time to talk about the other two, but I, I checked in on you guys and you guys had really good ideas and were really critically thinking about these artworks. And almost everything in this room came from the tomb of one person, actually. So her name was Meritides and she was a noble woman um, in Egypt. And so the inner coffin here behind us the outer coffin and a lot of these objects, including the, the blue figurines back there, were all put in her tomb to help her into the afterlife. So these objects weren't 
really meant for us to be looking at them in a museum. They were meant to stay in her tomb and help her on that journey to the afterlife. Um, the mummy, just so you know, the mummy, that's not her. That's actually a different person. We do not have the mummy of Meritides, but this room kind of gives you an idea of what an inner tomb would look like for an Egyptian noble person. So you guys did a great job of investigating these artworks and um, sharing with each other and with me. So as we walk into the next room, I will, if you have a card, just come hand it to me and we'll kind of meet in the, um, just right in here in the alcove and I'll give you some instructions, okay? Let's gather back here in the center. Okay, so again, I'm gonna ask you, what did you notice about this space, what's going on in this room? And you can also think in terms of the last room that we just saw, how it compares, differs from that room. Yeah? There's not as much color as there was in there. Okay, so that was a comment on the last one. Yeah, that it, um, that over there it was all much brighter, blues, golds, things like that. And we don't see a ton of that in here. Ideas for why that might be? Okay, so it's a possibility that this is exposed to the elements, so wear and tear from weather and things like that could be a reason. What else did we notice about this space, or what, how can we describe it? Yeah. A lot of things here, parts of the body, are missing, maybe from something that happened excavating it out, or maybe just time. Okay, so kind of going along with the idea that there's not a lot, a lot of color, we're noticing a lot of breakage, right? Don't have a head on that guy. <laughs> um, we also see a lot of, you know, fragments of things in this room. So it could be part, again, of wear and tear over time. Could be a part of the excavation. So you're kind of thinking about the um, archaeologist and museum's role um, with these artifacts when they come to us. One more idea, yeah. Um, I saw that um, most of it is like about single people. Okay. Okay, so sure, so the subject matter here. Um, in the last room we saw a lot of gods, a lot of hieroglyphics on, on a lot of these things. And here we seem to see singular figures being represented. So maybe there's something more to be investigated there. What we're gonna do in this gallery is we're all together as one group gonna take a closer look at one work of art. And that's gonna be the one right behind us back here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a minute to quietly look at it and you can come up, especially because there isn't color, it, sometimes it's hard to see the details. So I'll invite you during this minute to come up and look really closely all over it and then we'll have a conversation about it, okay? So go ahead and take a minute to quietly observe this piece. And if you want to switch, if you're on the right side and you want to switch over to the left, feel free. The letter A is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so what, and, and I'm sorry, I know you guys are high schoolers, but I'm actually going to have us sit down for this, not because I'm treating you like kids, but just because, um, it's hard for all of us to see <laughs> if, we're, if some of us are standing in front of it. So sorry, I don't mean to demean you. But um, OK, so you guys had some time to look at this. Tell me, what's going on in this artwork? Yeah. It looks like a battle scene of some. Wait, no. I got to see it again. It looks okay. like boats, but it looks like they're also battling. OK. In some way. 
So you're kind of thinking about the subject matter of this and what's actually the action that's taking place and you're recognizing the possibility of boats and then further than that, the possibility that the people on the boats might be battling. What do you see that makes you say they're fighting? Because it looks like they're stabbing each other and <laughs> one being pushed into like the water. Like this one down here? Yeah. Okay. So we see that they have some type of object or weapon here that they're using against each other, maybe stabbing, as well as one figure who might have been forcefully pushed down into the water. Thank you. What more can we find? Yeah. It, to me, it looks like these are like right in the ship because it looks like they're transporting cattle and just rowing a boat on one side. Okay. And then it looks like other people are coming in and. Okay, so similar to the idea of aggression that was mentioned earlier, you're kind of adding on to that that maybe they're not, um, maybe they're not bat battling, but maybe they're actually coming to raid this boat that could be transporting um, the cattle here. What do you see that makes you say these people are transporting? Okay, so in addition to the boat down here that's carrying some livestock, we also have people on foot up here that look like they could be carrying some type of material on their bag or on their backs also. Thank you. What more can we find? Yeah? What might we um, I just saw, I think, are those fish? Down here on the bottom? Okay, so we kind of identified some of the things on the top two registers, and down in the bottom in the center there are some objects that might be fish. What do you see that, see that makes you say they could be fish? <laughs> They're shaped and like, it looks like they have a tail mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. in some way. But they look like really weird fish with like really tiny heads, so that's why I was like, I'm not sure. <laughs> Okay, so the general shape kind of looks like fish. We got the fin and the heads, but they also kind of, they definitely look like a species that maybe we're not familiar with around here. <laughs> Thank you. What more can we find? Yeah. There's also like a bunch of different animals right in the middle. Like a right here. And like a bird. Okay, so there's like a bird and a fish. Right here. Okay, so um, to the left of the fish here, we have some more animals. Um, could be like a snake and a bird. So more meaning down here are more animals that make sense of those things. Thank you. What more can we find? Yeah. There actually are some fish, like right over there. Like, they, yeah, oh, yeah. Like right there. yeah, okay. More, more recognizable species of fish on this side <laughs> for us. So, yeah, we've got these three registers, and we're kind of trying to make sense of the animals that are down here at the bottom. So, oh. Okay, yeah. The half figures here are carrying fish in their arms and on their soldiers. Yeah. Thank you. What more can we find? Yeah. They, it seems like they have a lot more hieroglyphics over there. Mm. Where you can not see them. Mm hmm. Sorry. They just start to kind of hang out and they put them over here. Okay. So um, we've noticed a lot of um, human figures in the boats and everything, but you're kind of noticing a concentration of possible hieroglyphics down in this portion. What do you see that makes you say they're hieroglyphics? No, that's okay. Okay, so from prior knowledge, knowing that this imagery is symbolic of, of a letter or a word, so we've got hieroglyphic writing down here at the bottom. Thank you. What more can we find? Yeah? Okay. Sure. Oh, right here. Yeah, so we had talked when we were just kind of talking about the whole gallery of the overall lack of color here, but you're looking a little bit more closely and notice that maybe originally this had been painted because we've got maybe some red here on the, on the figures and then some blue down beneath the boat, some remnants of that. Thank you. What more can we find? Yeah. Like 
Okay, so you're noticing um, the stylized way that this that these registers are broken up. So we're thinking, well, this this maybe this is water and it's blue, but then there are just people underneath it rather than like all of this being water. So something odd might be going on there. So what do you see that makes you say that this is water then? You were kind of questioning it, but what do you see that makes you say it is water? This band right here. Well, I see mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So the use of the pigment here can be used to, um, as a signifier that it's water. You mentioned that it doesn't look like natural or realistic water, so maybe there's um, some things in here that are used as symbols to represent water. Thank you, what more can we find? Yeah. I'm thinking that maybe it's split up into sections, each, because you can kind of see a line, mm -hmm. obviously not because it's floating over there. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, thinking about these as um, separate registers that might, you said, represent different stories. What do you see that makes you say these different registers are a story? Um, well, it's not a definite story, but it's a scene of some kind. Okay. Um, in the middle, it looks like some kind of battle scene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so we had kind of talked at length about the battle in the beginning of our conversation. And so maybe all these registers could be connected, that this is kind of um, pre-battle, loading the ships. And maybe this is after the battle or, or whatever it is that's going on here in the middle register. You mentioned like unloading the ships or something having to do with protective things. So kind of thinking about this as um, sections of a story or a, um, a recounting of a scene or something like that. Thank you. What more can we find? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. So adding on another idea to that, like. Um, thinking of like times throughout history, peace, war, and, the, and then aftermath or peace again. What do you see um, in this top register that makes you say that this represents kind of a time of normalcy or peace? Okay, sure. So this one up here, it looks a little bit more like daily life as opposed to this one down here that seems more of an aggressive event. You guys did a fantastic job looking at and deconstructing this object here. I'm going to ask you a couple more questions, but first I'm going to tell you a few things real fast. So just like the artworks in, uh, in the first gallery that we were talking about, this was also in a tomb. Um, now we see it here in the museum, but it was originally meant to be in someone's tomb. So knowing that extra piece of information what might this have, what might its purpose have been? Knowing that it was in a tomb and we had already kind of talked about what we think the stories are that are going on here, why would this be in a tomb? Yeah. Well, it, it could be a depiction of the afterlife, I guess, and then the journey of the afterlife. Okay. Because it has the boats and that, that's how they believe they were transported to the afterlife, and it has the um, aggression and uh, tension. Okay. Sure. So we talked about how the journey to the afterlife was could be a difficult one, and so maybe this middle section could represent that of that deceased person. Okay. Two more ideas here, and then here. Um, yeah. It could also be maybe um, he might have been a really important person, and okay. this might have been one of his battles, his great reward battle, um, and so they wanted to remember it and put it on. 
Sure, another possibility that it's directly tied to the life of the deceased person and representing um, an important milestone in his life. So it could be a representation of that, one more idea. Okay, so maybe it, yeah, so maybe it represents, uh, if this were a ruler, um, different eras of his, of his kingdom and the people who lived there. So lots of different possibilities here. And I'm glad that we looked at this one and you guys had so many different ideas um, because it's not really known for sure what this all represents. There are a lot of different ideas that archaeologists and curators have. One major thing that they point out about this piece is that it does show daily life. Um, you know, we talked about them hauling cargo here, hauling fish down here. Um, up here, they are constructing boats. You know, that was someone's job to make a boat. So even though we don't know the exact significance of this scene, it shows us a lot about daily life. The middle register, you guys picked up on this, that there's some type of battle or something going on. It's thought that maybe it represents the Nile in the afterlife going into the afterlife. Um, but again, the importance of this is that it does show us scenes of, of daily life. And one fun fact about the fish down here, we talked about how weird they look. They're actually uh, carved so exactly that they can identify some of these species of fish. So even though they look weird to us, they apparently might be species over in ancient Egypt. So fun back there. Okay, we are gonna go up to China now. So switch your brains. <laughs> and it's kind of a long walk, so we kinda, we're gonna go upstairs, but you guys have done a fantastic job. So. Well, let's gather over here in front of this large case. Can everybody see? Feel free to get up closer. Close enough. We don't want to jostle it and vibrate it, but feel free to get up close. And I'd like for you to take just a quiet moment to look at all of the objects in here. So what are some of your impressions of the objects here? Oh, it says there's a stove right there. There's something recognizable like a stove. And can you point that out for all of our friends over on the other side who might not be able to see it? A wood fire stove. A wood fire stove. So it's up on that third tier. It's that middle, smaller middle object oh, there. sticking out. So it looks a little odd and different to us. Maybe not like a stove that we would have. Yes? I'm noticing over all of these, these are um, many figures of things people would use in their everyday lives, like like the hut and like the stove, because obviously a wood stove is not going to be that small. And it's the same with all of these. So it's probably like replicas. OK, so amongst all of the objects in this case, there's a recognition that it's something that we might find in everyday life, but because they're a lot smaller than what we might find in everyday life, you're speculating that they're replicas. Yeah, what more do you think about these? A couple pairs of shoes. So um, how do those differ than what we might expect to see today? So there are some shoes um, right here in the middle in the first row that, that look a little funny, a little different than what we would wear today. So we see some similarities to our own everyday life, some differences. Taking all of these in as a whole, what are some things that we might be able to tell about the people who would have used these in their daily life? Yes. Um, let me let me take this comment back here. Yes. The, um, thing for 
of the Holy Spirit in the offering table, they were probably spiritual people and also probably royal because some of this stuff is nicer than what common people would have. Okay, so you're pointing out objects specifically like up in that third row, mm -hmm. the far left object. Uh, it's a spiritual object. It's a ritual object. So that there is a, a spiritual aspect to their lives. And you've noticed that some things seem a little bit finer, that someone who might have a bit of wealth or status would have these objects. And what do you see that makes you say that? Um, the shoes. The shoes seem a little bit finer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Well, there's a granary for afterlife money, and then there's another one over there, so there might have been like more than one person that was in the family or something. Okay, so uh, looking again at these objects here, the granary on either side, granary for the afterlife, and wondering whether there's more than one person who might be associated with a family and associated with these objects. One more comment, yes. Um, so, like she was saying, the granary for afterlife money made me think like Egyptians, they do believe in afterlife. That was interesting. Yeah, looking back to where we just came from, ancient Egyptian civilization where there was a belief in the afterlife. And so now there might be another connection to ancient China and their belief in the afterlife. And we're going to explore that a little bit deeper here. I'd like to, for us to take a look around this gallery. And in so doing, I'm going to give you the same question cards that we had down in Egypt. And this time we'll be looking at the side that says China. And there are again three questions. So I'll pair you up and have you, with your group, select a work of art that you'd like to explore deeper. And the objects will be from all the way to that wall. And we won't go yet into this gallery here, so stay on this side of the door. And then there are two brown cases that sort of stick out in the middle of the room there. And uh, Sarah is standing there in the middle of the room. Um, so we want to stay on this side of those brown cases. But you have from that wall to this wall and to those brown cases, everything in the middle. So I'll divide you up into groups of four again. Remember, look at the China side. So how about you, you four right here, and then you four right here, right? And you four right here, and then... And you want to be a group of five, because I think we'll need a group of five, sorry. And then you four back here. What about, the, what about these give that feeling to you all? Mm -hmm. yeah. Standing on another figure. Symbolizing something? Like, if what the dragon might symbolize in the Chinese. Ah, so the dragon has a lot of things. Do you guys know anything about the dragon and China? So, how, how do we know that this is a dragon here? What do we see, it, mm -hmm, what do we see that, that makes it look that way? Well, it's breathing fire. It's like a smoke. It looks like the kind of dragon that would be stitched onto the back of a rope that they would wear. So the details of the scale and then the fire or the smoke coming out of its mouth, and then it reminds you of something you've seen on, um, on clothes and attire before. Yeah, that's great.
talking about it being a beloved animal and a beloved horse. What do you see here that makes you say that this is beloved? The way it's different. It's really kind to it belong to someone who took care of it and was well off. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, the details on this are exquisite. Mm -hmm. Keep your breath. For the main, never ever noticed that. <laughs> so ever. Brand new detail. There's little tiny holes in the clay Ooh. up here on top, so it might have been weaved through. Oh yeah. Ooh, we should read our question there. Oh yeah. Sorry. So take one more minute and wrap up your comments, and then we'll gather here in the middle. So this is pretty different than what you all were looking at over here. What what drew you to this? That is like a lion, bear, tiger, dragon. It is a lion. And so it's a lion. It's a tiger. A some tiger kind of mythical bear, creature. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the one over there is like it's the same except the tongue is more like yeah. It's okay. So it's, noticing it's still a tongue. that you've got two here on either side of this door, but. Maybe a few differences. Yeah. Hey, let's gather back here in the middle. And we're going to gather back here in the middle. So let's start with this table here. And um, we want to get up close, but again, be careful not to brush up against the table. We don't want to vibrate these objects, but feel free, come on up closer so we can see all the details here. There was a group that selected this as um, something that they wanted to pursue. So we'll let them share, but anyone else who wants to offer some ideas, please feel free to do so. So what were some of the things that you noticed about these objects here? So the first thing that stood out at you was the colors, um, which is something that we talked a little bit about in Egypt, is that was something that was different in some of the galleries that we were in down there. You've noticed it here. Um, and then you've taken a closer look at some of the expressions on the faces. And I know that you had mentioned that there was some kind of a, a angry or fierce look to both this figure here and this camel and that there was a face on the side of the, the saddlebag there. So, um, so as you were thinking about these, that second question, what might these objects tell you about life in early Chinese culture? What, what kinds of ideas did you all arrive at? Like a lot of symbolism 
there's a lot, lot of ideas here. First of all, you were thinking about why might somebody create a camel and a horse here. Uh, and several of you also picked up on the horses in the gallery, and so we'll talk about those in a minute. But wondering, were camels important in early Chinese civilization? Were horses important in early Chinese culture? And so what was the significance and importance of them? They must have had some kind of importance to have been created in this way. And then you were also picking up on perhaps some kind of symbolism, but grappling with, we're not quite sure what the symbolism is, but identifying they, they've got to mean something. And that was something that this group, looking in that case over there with the gold objects, um, they were wondering the same things. That looks like a dragon, but what does that mean? Why, what's the importance of a dragon? And you picked up on the dragon motifs here, dragon-like motifs on the sleeves, and then there's some kind of a beast-like image in the, the belt area and something on the head. There's a, a figure down here that's not quite human-like. So what are these figures? What's the, the symbolism and importance of them? Um, so thinking about the, the horses, I want to take just a couple seconds to think about on either side here. One group looked closely at this horse, and one group looked closely at that horse. What are some ideas that you came up with about them? Yes. Um, with that horse, we noticed that there was a hole in the rear end, probably where the hair went in. Um, and we also noticed that there's a big hole in the belly which is where we assume they might have put their hand and threaded it through because we noticed in the main there are little tiny holes all in it where the hair is missing too so we're supposing that maybe they reached their hand up there with like a needle of some sort mm -hmm. and threaded the hair through um, and we also noticed that it might have used to been painted sorry that sounded weird um, but anyways uh, because the hooves are orange and it looks, there's little places on the horse's body where that looks like there was color and chipped so. so what are some of those, what does that tell us about the object that you think at one point there was a tail and there was a mane, but it's no longer there, that the, the paint maybe that used to be there, vibrant, we can't see as well. What does that tell us about that object? That it's very old. Yeah, that there's some age to it. Yeah. What were some ideas that you had about this object over here, this horse? Yes. It may have belonged to someone more wealthy because of the way it's decorated and taking care of the hair. It looks like it's been either cut or brushed. Or mm -hmm. Looks like it's been taken care of. And yeah, you, they noticed that there's a great deal of care and intricacy with this object. So um, the way that it was created meant that there was someone who revered the horse, maybe it was a beloved horse, and the artistic care in which someone created it, there, it was with great skill. Yes? So she said that since that horse is decorated, taken care of, maybe it was owned by someone wealthy, well maybe that one was owned by someone that was not wealthy, because if it's not decorated, it doesn't have hair. So thinking about who would have had these in their tombs, maybe someone who was wealthy, maybe someone who um, was in a different status of society. Um, and these were in tombs. All of these objects were in tombs. So think about the difference between these objects and then the objects in Egypt that were in tombs. What are some of the similarities and differences that we have? Yes? There's a lot more color, and I see, you know, the clothing's a lot different, of course. I mean, there's a lot more of it, and it kind of looks like Okay, so we're seeing again the use of the color and the armor. Yeah, one more comment. I noticed that the head on that horse is quite small, and the head on that one is preferably more normal sized. So that's the difference between the artist making that one smaller and that one bigger. Okay. I just that. Yeah, so we're thinking about the individual artist, which we hadn't necessarily thought about in ancient Egypt, that there was a person who would have created these objects. And um, so these objects being placed in the tomb, the first ones that we looked at, called Ming Chi, were, um, they were somewhat readily available for people. They were, they were meant to be the replicas, as we brought up, of daily life. 
so that in the afterlife you could have some of the same things that you had in your living life, those everyday objects that you all noticed before. Once you got to the afterlife, you needed other things. Um, you needed protection. So you all were noticing that there was something going on with this camel here and this figure here, that there was a fierceness to them that, that you noticed in their, their expressions. So as we look at these, um, there's an element of guardianship here. And if we were to look closer again, we could see other elements of guardianship within the tomb. And then you all were thinking about what was important in that time. And here in this gallery, we can see a reflection like of the camel of the Silk Road. Anybody heard of the Silk Road before? You have one person. I challenge you when you get back to your classroom to look up the Silk Road and you'll see evidence of camels and horses transporting goods and materials into and out of China. So I'd like to head into here and we'll look at some more objects. And if you've got a card, you can just hand that to me here. Thanks. So I'd like for us to take one minute to look around this gallery in the walls, up on the wall, and in this case in the middle. And then we'll gather back and talk about what we've noticed. Another 20 seconds. Okay, so looking at the objects in here, what are some of your impressions about them? Yes. I see the word ritual. Okay, you see the word ritual and objects that are associated with ritual sacrifice. In what way do you see that these objects are representative of that concept? Mm, just like the bowls, I guess. Maybe the way they're designed, they have little kind of like all of them have some sort of specific use. Okay, the functionality, and you're noticing that these vessels here, they're bowl-like, and so they, they convey some kind of use or ritualistic use. You had an idea, and then we'll go here. Um, my idea was that many of the objects in this room are very intricate and detailed with their designs. There's just tiny little lines and all that. Okay, so we noticed some in the other gallery about the craftsmanship, the way that these were depicted and created. And you've noticed the designs and the fine use of lines. So how would you describe the way that these designs are put onto some of these objects? Um, I don't really know how to explain it. Or the way they look. Any anyone else have an idea about the way the designs look? Yes. Um, well, I remember you saying just a second now how the designs were put into it. Well, some of these look like um, they're stone, and so they might have used a chisel, like a small chisel, um, to and artists, of course, would enter the. Uh, would put the designs into the stone to make it pretty, so they could use a chisel to make those designs. Okay, so um, the way that they could have done it perhaps was by incising or chiseling into it. You brought up the idea of materials and what these are, 
you noticed um, that they are stone-like looking. I noticed that some of you all over here were wondering when you first look, is it stone, is it bone, is it something else? So looking iron, looking at some of the materials that were used. Yes, you had an idea. Oh, uh, I noticed behind you there's a wine vessel and then a ritual wine vessel and they look different. Okay, so um, the labels here tell us what these are a wine vessel, a ritual wine vessel, and you're noticing some differences. What are some of those differences? Um, the ritual wine vessel, vessel looks a little bit like more intricately designed. Okay, the, the intricacy, going back to that design there, in that ritual wine vessel looks a little bit more elaborate than in the simply wine vessel here that we have. So, um, these objects here in this small gallery, they are some of our oldest objects within the Chinese collection. They span back 3,000 years, some of them. So if you can think back to people living 3,000 years ago and what their daily life would have been like, what their belief system would have been like, um, and they, one of their belief systems was that they needed to take care of their ancestors and the afterlife. And so these ritual objects that you picked up deal with that connection to the ancestor, deal with the, the rituals that they would live on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, in respect and honoring their ancestors. So these were associated with the afterlife, just like in ancient China, but in a little different way. We're going to jump ahead in time just a little bit in this next gallery here, and I'm going to show you an image of a tomb setting from which some of the objects that we're going to see next come from. So if you'll follow me. I'm going to turn it off. So this image here, go ahead and get up close a little bit can give you a sense of the setting, the environment, in which the objects in this gallery space would have been located. I'd like for you to take some time to look around this gallery, not going back into where we just were and not going into the gallery space where we first started our exploration of China. And I'd like for you to make sort of a gut reaction to a work of art that you really like, that it excites you, um, that it puzzles you, you've got a question about it, and I'd like for you to put your card on the floor in front of the work of art. And as you're walking around looking at these works of art, I'd like for you to think about how they're similar to and different than that gallery where we just were. So here's your card for your excitement, your exclamation, you really like it, you think it's amazing, and then here's your card for you've got questions, you're wondering about it, it puzzles you, that sort of thing. So I'll give you one of each, and again, just set it on the floor in front of the object. Great, thanks. Here you go. There you are. And once you have both of your cards, you can go make your selections. Thank you. And Sarah will have your exclamation point. Thank there you. you are, you're welcome. And I'm going to be one card short. Oh, sorry, you just need that. No, I think we're good. We're good? Yeah. Great, okay. Great. Take another 30 seconds to make your final decisions and then we'll gather back around. OK, 
Okay, and if you can't make a decision right now, you can continue to think about it. Let's gather back around, please. And do we have any volunteers for someone who's just really itching to talk about something that they noticed? Okay, what was the object that you saw? Over there. Okay, let's go take a closer look at it. There are like these beads and I just thought they were super beautiful and I was wondering what is that thing right there? This right over here? Yes. Or within the beads? Right, like in the middle, like right there, like that goat thing. Okay. I'm not sure what it is. It looks like a case of some kind. Okay. Like it would hold something. First of all, can everybody see the beads that our attention has been drawn to here? and the intricacy, the different um, ways that they've been put together, the designs that they artistically, they really caught our eye. So thanks for pulling our attention to that. And then there's a question here about an object. What is it? What's the function of it? So you mentioned that it, it looks like some kind of an animal, perhaps mm -hmm. like a goat. And um, what did you say that you thought perhaps maybe it was? It would hold something. I didn't get time to read that, so I'm just guessing here. Um, it would hold something like maybe, I'm not sure, jewelry of some kind. Okay. Some it looks like it perhaps opens up and you could hold something inside of it, yes. Well, when I came around, I read it and it says it holds lamp oil. Mm -hmm. oh. I didn't get time to read it. There's an image here and you can see it open and the back part of the animal opens up so that there's a, a spot on top of the head um, for, for, the, for this to open up and for light and oil to, to come out of it. So it would have, there would have been a wick, like we have candles with wicks, and so it would, could have been lit and used in that way. Um, so we've noticed a couple of different things here, beads, a lamp oil. I'll turn our attention, there are some, a lot of um, exclamation points down here on the, the floor in front of these items and this object. So let's look a little closer at these. What are some ideas that you had about this? What excited you? Yes. Jane. Jade. Oh, oh did you say, is jade. it jade? Is it or? Jade? Yeah, so we can see here on the label that it is jade. And you wondered, is it jade? So what gave you the impression that it could be? Well, the big circle-ish thingy. It was a bit green, and then I know jade can also be white. And kind of has that. Yeah, one of the more famous colors for jade is green, and this larger circle has that. And then also jade can be a variety of colors such as white. So along the side here, it can be. Um, what what else do you know about jade? I know it's really tough. It's really tough. It's one of the hardest stones. Um, you can use a diamond to carve into it, um, but there are it's extraordinarily tough. And if you look at this, and if you look at this object back here, I know several of you know that we're looking at that one over a long period of time. So, ages, weeks, months, years, sand could be abraded over this jade. And so the, the intricacy on this is pretty extraordinary if you think about the time that it took to create this and the toughness that you bring out for the properties of jade. There's a saying that to know jade is to know China, that jade is one of those properties where there's strength, there's durability, and the people of China you need to be strong, you need to be durable. Um, and there are other qualities of life, but jade is something that, that reflects that, the qualities that ancient China, and still today, Chinese people um, respect. Yes? I saw this, and it looks like a 
door knocker? Am I right? It's what gives you the impression it could be a door knocker? Because I've seen on people's doors, they have like the little tiny red ones and you have to pound them. And mm -hmm. I see this and it kind of looks similar, just much more intricate. And I hope I didn't say that wrong. Um, and you could use the big round and it has the mouth which is holding it so you can move it back and forth too. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. So this, let's pull a little bit closer here. It gives you the impression of what we might see today on a door and then that ringer that you would use to knock on the door. You've got an, a thought about this? Um, I, think you're, I, think, I, I think I read somewhere that you put them on the doors of tombs and it like protects the person that's in the tomb. So maybe it like descended down to what is now a door knocker. <laughs> so you've read somewhere that there's an idea of putting something on a door or putting something on a tomb that's protective in nature. Um, we talked a little bit about that in the gallery next door, that element of guardianship and protection. So why do we think that we might see this here in this space? Any ideas are fine. I don't have a right answer. I'm curious to know what you all think. Maybe it had, does, maybe it was special to the person that was in the tomb and maybe it was a, just really nice. Okay, so if we're thinking about the person who was in the tomb, maybe that was something that they wanted. Maybe um, it was something that was intended to be a nice feature for the tomb. Any other ideas? Yes. Um, maybe it just helped show their wealth um, because it looks like gold. And so it just maybe helps show whenever you went to a tomb, you might be able to see this and be like, oh, it shows their wealth. They must have been a really rich person. Okay, so the fact that this is gold is indicative perhaps of the status and wealth of the individual who had this. And in fact, the people who did have items of these, um, like these in tombs, did have status, wealth, prestige um, within their society. And these are reflections of the society in which the ancient Chinese people were living at the time. Again, we're not quite as old as those ritualistic vessels that we saw in that other tomb over there. But um, we are still looking at objects that would have been placed in the tomb for use with ancestors um, to ensure their prosperity in the afterlife. So as we conclude the tour, um, I thank you all for taking a deeper look with Sarah and me. It was great to hear all of your ideas. And as we go back downstairs, I'd like for you to be thinking about what are some of the main similarities and differences that you thought you saw between the ancient Egyptian civilization and the ancient Chinese civilizations. So thanks everybody so much. Okay. So as we were walking back down, I asked you to think about what are some of the major similarities and differences that you saw from ancient Egypt to ancient China. What are some of the thoughts that you had about that? Yes. Um, a difference that I saw was in Egypt, there was since like the pictures and stuff were more boxy like I said um, but in China they look flat but they look like they have more movement like more motion to them. Okay you're looking at the stylization of the human figure and in ancient China I'm sorry in ancient Egypt noticing that there's a rigidity and a boxiness to the figures versus in in China there's some fluidity and movement with the human figure. Yes. There's a lot more variety in the colors Okay. More um, ornate designs in the clothes and the buildings in China. Okay. The way that they've, the objects have been depicted, you are noticing a little bit more color in China. More You're interesting. More interesting design. colors in China. A little bit more intricacy in terms of the design work that you saw there. What about the function of the objects? That's something interesting to think about. 
Yeah, let's see if we can get one more before I come right. back to you. Yes? The, the, function, the Chinese seem to have more like sacred like, sense to them um, and their ancestor, like to help them worship their ancestors and stuff. And the Egyptians were more about that. Okay, the difference in terms of what we initially saw in Egypt was in a way to help to get someone to the afterlife, and that was the primary function, helping the, the individual person, versus in China, that relationship between the living and their ancestors, and there seems to be a, a deal of sacredness or ritualism in that, in that connection to the ancestors. Yes? There also seemed to be a few more practical items in China. Like they were, they were also fine things. There were also things that you use in everyday life. Whereas in Egypt, it was more about the afterlife, what you put in the tomb, and things that really couldn't be handled after death. Mm -hmm. So China seemed a little bit more everyday, or at least to me. Okay, we see how the the, um, the way that the everyday life has been dealt with is a little bit different. And you seem to notice a couple of more examples, different examples in China versus in Egypt. It was more about the, the function within the afterlife versus the everyday. Yeah, one more comment. Um, I noticed that the Chinese, like everybody else is saying, they, they took their family more as, I'm gonna take care of you later on. It seemed like they just had more stuff to, you know, worship their ancestors. And the, again, Egypt was all the afterlife. Get yourself, not your family. Mm -hmm. So we saw present in the art, and perhaps the ancient Egyptians did look to their ancestors or help their ancestors, but we didn't necessarily see it as readily as we did in China that it was much more about getting yourself to the afterlife, making sure that you were prepared and ready to get into the afterlife versus China where it was helping your ancestors within the afterlife. Really great thoughts and ideas and I encourage you to keep thinking about that today and um, as you continue your studies. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.